Hello, and welcome to our ninth edition of FSI Fridays. I'm Johansson out of Charlotte, joined by Edwin in Boston. Hey, Edwin, what exciting conversations do we have in store for today? All right, Johansson, happy Friday to everyone out there. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, titles yet. I think all of us can relate to having some interesting experiences with customer support and call center bots and prompts. So we'll talk about how improving the experiencing, uh, experience leveraging AI can yield better customer retention. We'll have a brief but exciting demo that Johansson and I thought was really cool. Then we'll tie it all together. How does it work? The art of the possible. And finally, we'll wrap it up with some Q&A today on FSI Fridays. You said it, Edwin. This is going to be a fun one. As a quick reminder, we'll spend 30 minutes talking on today's topic and leave the last 15 minutes to address any burning questions. So please use the Q&A window and we'll monitor during the presentation. If you're watching the recording on our YouTube channel, feel free to use the comments below to ask your questions. So let's get started and meet the presenters for today. We are joined by two individuals who have solid and successful careers in the financial services industry and AI respectively. Pam, your LinkedIn profile, you've got a cool title and job description, responsible AI champion. You educate businesses on how to use AI for good and without bias. Can you tell us a little bit about your role at Microsoft as a data and AI specialist? Sure. Uh, my teams get sick of hearing me say I feel like I have the best job at Microsoft because we deal in data, which is the new oil. And in order to surface and tease out insights for business to make really solid decisions for success, um, it all comes in the, that uh, AI and BI realm. So um, thanks for teeing that up because I love to brag about my job. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, you know, I also heard you're a big uh, Mandalorian fan and you're obsessed with one of the characters. <laughs> Want to talk about that just real quick? I am. So I, I'm madly in love with Baby Yoda. And to the degree that I had him on my profile in Teams uh, when it came out and um, again, obsessed and my skip level manager was like, Pam, you got to take it off. It's too much. Well, that's awesome. Well, Pam, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say and go f as far as I'm madly in love with Yoda, Baby Yoda, but Baby Yoda is awesome. Um, so, Marco, I'm really fascinated with cognitive services and AI. I'm sure you're working on things that you can't talk about, but really want to. Uh, what is your role focused on? And I also hear you're taking the work from home initiative to the next level. Yes, um, thank you, guys. Um, so. Uh, as you can see uh, by the background behind me at the beach uh, today, which is a joke because I'm in Serbia, which is landlocked. Um, but um, <laughs> I'm spending my vacation with you guys because this is this is fun to do. Um, so I'm a dev lead uh, in cognitive services and I focus on on-prem containers uh, delivering those. And we have had some huge success with a lot of uh, companies uh, who are um, interested in, uh, you know, kind of responsible AI, keeping a lot of things on-prem and then cautiously transitioning into the cloud. Well, let's get right into it and talk about our topic today. So just think about my own personal experiences, you know, calling into a call center, you know, you first get that kind of automated response and those have even evolved over the years. Now you can actually ask a question and it understands what you're trying to say. But even when you're talking to an agent, sometimes you can understand and or hear when, you know, the agent may be in an unpleasant mood or even I'm in an unpleasant mood and then I take that on on the agent. And so when we think about these experiences of how we can enhance both my customer experience, as well as the organization's ability to enhance the client or customer experience, you know, we've got a really enormous opportunity here. So thinking about this, Pam, can you just tell us how the call center is really a gold mine for our customers? Sure, so call centers call up are what we'll call the intersection of interaction. Uh, it's an ideal place for data to be gathered about clients. And for a credit card company and financial services all up, it's really about loyalty. So a firm can invest in hiring people, uh, but there has to be an investment in technology as well to accurately be able to train models. And those models can help the company predict who is the best demographic for your product, and also how they expect to be served. So 
Um, how do you get loyal customers? There's really two ways. You have to recruit loyal customers to begin with, but then you need to manage them and earn and keep that loyalty. So the problem is fundamentally you've got a VP of cards and you've got a VP of retail and you've got a VP of mortgages. So how do you pull all that customer data together to serve it up to senior leaders and give them real hard metrics? Um, the way that the data center helps that is uh, by looking at things like how long does it take to onboard a client? How long does it take to resolve a dispute? And what does that cost? Because there is a real cost. And then what are the metrics and sentiment to make a client um, happy who wasn't happy at the beginning of a call? Um, and ultimately it will enable senior leaders to be able to brand the firm better institute new products, create new services, and help them on their uh, trajectory to success in, in finance. No, uh, Pamela, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, every time we hear and we call in, the call is being recorded. I can only imagine how much time is being spent listening to those calls and analyzing it. So call agents definitely have immense responsibilities with customer calls. How can an organization improve from an agent perspective to best serve a customer? I mean, humans make mistakes. We don't always have the right cues, but having both a human and AI mindset can help improve the customer experience. So Pam, when is the right right time to have a real person and when is the right time to have a bot uh, and what does the best of both worlds look like so bots are very useful whether it's a voice bot or a chat bot they're very useful for event creation so you're calling in and entering data with your voice um, say it's identity or menu options for a department that you're looking for those kind of things and bots are also good when the answers are short sentences and without a lot of complex wording. Um, again, whether that's a chatbot uh, or a voice bot. Agents um, are needed because customers ultimately, they need to be heard and understood. And while the technology for bots is getting a lot better all the time, there's still a need for a live agent online to address like an upset or an anxious client. And the benefit of that live person from a tech perspective is that an agent can be fed information to resolve a conflict. So say it's offering a discount or verifying a rate or waiving a fee. So using cognitive analytics, customers can actually um, draw from patterns and they add to that knowledge base I talked about before, whether it's about the employee and the agent servicing the customer or the customer themselves. So these diagnostics around why an event happened and then be able to solve for it the next time. Um, then clients can also run um, prescriptive analytics to determine the next action for the agent to take. Um, so Marco, I know you have a bunch of experiences and, and actually capabilities um, that we have at Microsoft to enable this. Um, can you give us a quick walkthrough of, of how this works? Uh, sure. So basically, uh, what we see on, on, on the screen over here is uh, the capabilities that we that we hand out to the agents. And agents, I mean, they could be of uh, various different uh, uh, degrees of sophistication. They could be early in their training. They could be, you know, very experienced and savvy. Uh, but what companies typically want out of this uh, whole process is some uniformity so that when uh, people call the uh, agents, they get, you know, that uh, top level satisfaction that they're looking for. So without diving into too many details, uh, you know, the possibilities of course are endless. Um, I just wanted to kind of illustrate a few of those. So uh, one example would be that, uh, you know, while agent is talking to the customers, uh, the automated system can queue up potential solutions. Okay, so even while, you know, the conversation is going on, you know, we could have this like tree decision tree going on. Uh, the second thing would be, you know, uh, the agent is preoccupied with a conversation just like we are uh, talking right now. You know, they don't really have time uh, nor, you know, kind of uh, bandwidth to take the smart uh, note taking and then, you know, basically making like the important uh, key uh, side notes for the posterior uh, analysis. Also, like I mentioned, you know, um, you know, we would like to get the the response is to be scripted, to follow some regulations of the company, and uh, all of those uh, can come from the automated reminder system basically integrated into the agent assist. Uh, 
That's great, Marco. You know, we would love to see uh, what this looks like in a financial services scenario. So I, I know you put together a quick uh, video demo here. So let's go ahead and play that. And then um, we'll, we'll take a look and we'll come back. Hi, thanks, Hi for holding. thanks for holding. How can I help you today? Can I help you today? Hi, I'm seeing a charge on my account that I'm certain isn't mine, and I'm really upset about it. Okay, can I have the date have and the, date the amount of the, the transaction? transaction? Sure, it was $32.50 and was charged on April 25th, but I was on vacation in Germany and didn't use my card over there. Okay, I see the charge, uh, and I understand you want to enter a dispute on it? Yes, will you reverse it, please? Uh, yeah, we can I open an investigation, open investigation to, reverse it. to reverse it. And will I still be able to use So that's card? while that's playing, uh, Pam and Marco, do you want to talk through what's happening here? Um, you know, there seems to be some sentiment, uh, you know, different colors, and, you know, you can see a live video of you talking in the bottom right. Uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's going on? So, so what we're looking over here is basically live transcriptions uh, going on between Pamela and, and, and one of our uh, one of my associates. And they were in a live conversation talking about the the, the business, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the the typical uh, conversation in a, in a in a business like environment where they're talking about the I think it was a dispute. Pam, was that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And and then as the as the trans transcriptions hit the system, what happens is that sentiment analysis is being queued, and then uh, each utterance or basically the sentence being said is being analyzed and given positive, negative, or neutral sentiment, okay? What we also see on the side is that we have, uh, like I said, like a, a schema, a recipe of what we should be going through and what uh, topics we should cover. And those topics are being, you know, uh, transitioned from red to green because we, you know, as Pam and um, my colleague have done this conversation, you know, they have covered some of those uh, key things that should be covered in a, in a matter of dispute. Uh, so. Um, at the end, you can see that um, basically there's a there's a transcription that, that that's uh, echoed to the screen that can be uh, queued up for a posterior analysis. Uh, there's also some key uh, phrases being uh, taken out, and also there's some basically checklist of the um, uh, you know the uh, the scripted um, uh, conversation uh, template um, take place as well. I mean, you know, Marco, Johansson and I were blown away by this demo when we first saw it. I love the green and red sentiment indicators as well as the suggested response that pop up very quickly. Uh, this is so much better than a static script and adapts real time to the caller's request. What's going on in the background? I mean, how is this all coming together? Uh, yeah, thanks. So uh, we have uh, we have this slide basically dedicated to that. As you can see, uh, you know, we have both the customer and the agent uh, listed in the lower um, uh, left corner, uh, they go through what we call a telephony connector. So this is the adapter, uh, you know, in the in the uh, telephony center, and then this is the the point from which we extract the information that we need to actually analyze the call. And that's metadata about the agent and the customer, as well as the actually live um, uh, real time protocol, basically the voice kind of hitting our. Um, uh, our machinery. So what we can do, what we can see from this point on, is that we have the listener uh, that basically accepts the call, and then it publishes a lot of events. It basically says there's a conversation that takes place. You know, somebody should transcribe it. So, you know, something should happen. So this is kind of like a typical scheduling mechanism uh, in the telephony system. And then the most important thing uh, happens, which is the speech recognition. We actually go from the audio to the transcribed text. So this is the the bulk of the the um, work, and this is where you know uh, the errors can be very costly, and and we take pride in uh, making sure that the speech recognition system is solid. From this point on, we queue up to this brain we have on the side. So this brain is comprised of uh, multiple uh, different uh, pieces. Uh, the, the, these acronyms are maybe unknown to you, but this is Chris is basically custom speech, uh, so we can actually adapt speech. Uh, Lewis is the language understanding, so we actually take the text and we take it into the language understanding uh, processing, and then we have text analytics like sentiment analysis, and then we have key phrase extraction, you know, those kinds of things. And as those are being pro uh, processed and enriched, they're being pushed into the notification manager. Notification manager is actually what takes all of this and then pushes it up to the screen so that agents has, you know, instant gratification on screen and knows 
you know, what what uh, processes need to take place. Uh, so that's basically what powers that demo that we just saw. Uh, th thanks for that, Marco. You know, that's a really good explanation around kind of just the workflow processes that that go that go through here behind the scenes. Um, but it sounds like this telephony connector or the telephone connector uh, plays an important role. Could you just help us better understand, you know, how that orchestration works and and why you know things like a telephony uh, connector is required? Uh, correct. So this uh, this is a very fragmented market, as as you can see on the left hand side. I mean, we have all kinds of providers, and these are just a few that we have. There's many, many different ones like uh, Genesis and Asterix and all kinds of uh, um, different providers. All of them have proprietary um, hardware and they have proprietary software. So basically, these adapters are not easy to build, nor is it easy to extract the uh, information about the uh, protocols that take uh, take place. This is why. We are in absolute need of strategic partners to help us basically connect to different telephony providers and audio code is one of them uh, there, there is helping us, you know, form a strategic partnership and then basically helps us light up um, our, you know, AI stack in various different uh, telephony systems. Thanks. Thanks, Marco. And so when we think about um, the other scenarios that, that Microsoft can provide um, here, you know, Pamela, do you mind just talking about, you know, we, we saw kind of that experience in the demo, but um, I know that, you know, we have more capabilities that that we can provide in this call center experience. Do you mind talking about that? Sure. So with the sentiment analysis um, and, and what you saw in the demo, certain words can actually be searched for. So for instance, if you're a call center and it's a brokerage firm and you see that the person starts talking about their kids or their grandkids, well, you know, can I extract that information and then serve up something to the agent or the, at that point it'd be a, probably a retail broker to be able to say, you know what, do you have trusts for those kids or are you putting away college money for those kids? So it's a good lead generator. Um, and for a credit card company, it costs on average $80 to acquire a customer um, and they return on average $120 in revenue a year. And while that might, those numbers seem a little bit low, there are companies that have been able to leverage their, their data center analytics um, with the use of a lot of our partners um, to be able to then offer additional products because again if there's more product involved that makes the client more sticky and then the loyalty follows so um and we we've, we've all seen it in the insurance company with uh you know you call in and they start asking you the series of questions well those series those series of questions many times were all something that was cognitive that actually um are being pushed to the agent so again it's about land and expand for um for the for the financial services firms. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. You know, customer loyalty, a lot of it deals with, um, you know, that experience. You know, I've, I've left uh, being a patron for one company just because I've had terrible experience uh, on the, in the, you know, like on a phone call. So mm -hmm. um, I think this is really important, that customization piece, right? So I, I recently discovered this notion of uh, custom voice font. So I think of it as another language. I love learning different languages. Financial services organizations definitely have their own lingo, keywords, acronyms, just like in the medical field or any other industry for that matter. Um, Marco, what, what are some of the, of the examples of intelligent capabilities to handle that customization. Are we right to assume we can customize and even train that experience? Yes, actually, uh, that's one of the uh, pillars of our uh, offering, basically. Uh, the custom uh, portal that we have enables you to customize the, uh, for example, oh, well, there it is. Uh, so we can have a custom wake uh, keywords in the, um, agent scenario like Cortana or something like that. So you can say, hey, Cortana, or you can say something else. There's a custom speech, which could be a, cu a custom acoustic model. So that's the basically the tonality of my voice and stuff like that. Or it could be the vocabulary that's being used, as you mentioned. You know, this could be the medical field or financial field, which has, would ha which has a, a lot of specialized lingo uh, that, that needs to be recognized. Uh, you'd be amazed, uh, you know, how much more accuracy we could gain uh, from basically a specialized uh, grammar that, that we could use. Uh, as you mentioned, we also have a custom voice. So we have a text-to-speech, uh, you know, uh, models. We have a really, really uh, solid base model. 
But then people sometimes would like to train their own voice or uh, they, as they call it a voice talent and uh, they would like to um, specialize into their scenario maybe you know in some entertainment industry or you know uh, maybe it, maybe even in, in the financial uh, so uh, those are all aspects that make uh, our offering as good as it is uh, in in addition to having a really solid base models and uh, you probably follow the news how we had you know the a human parity when it comes to speech to text and text to speech we take it to the uh, to another level with uh, with the level of customization and sophistication that we can add on top of it that's really cool i wonder how close um this voice modeling can come to you know my voice or johansson voice so we wouldn't be doing these anymore um but uh pam uh, you know you are a responsible ai champion how do we accommodate accessibility and where does ai fit in here so at Microsoft, we are serious and, and adamant that nobody is going to be left behind on their technology. Um, and a lot of that is credited to AI, right? It needs to be used without hidden or evident bias. But there are folks that need a computer to speak into it to type. And there are people that need an adaptive keyboard. And there are those that need a computer to speak to them in order to perform their work. So using AI for speech to text or text to speech functionality, uh, facial recognition, a la something like Windows Hello to log in, also speech recognition and language translation. Um, those are all part of our, our suite and they are all used to help with accessibility and making people more productive. So I don't want to steal this thunder. I know there's some responsible AI session uh, next week with uh, with Nick. So I'd, I'd say tune into that to learn a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, that that session's going to be great as well. Just you know, I, I'm fascinated and I'm actually you know love the different things that Microsoft is doing for accessibility and making sure that everybody is inclusive in in meetings and and also in the products that we build. So Marco, one of the things I hear often from our customers is that majority of their call center data is stored in an on-premises environment in their data center. How can organizations take advantage of capabilities in the cloud with an understanding that there are security concerns and a potential requirement for these kind of on-premises data center solutions? Specifically, as we talk to our financial services customers who are in these regulated industries. Right, that's a that's a big pain for a lot of customers, and they come to us and they ask us about you know our on-prem presence uh, because they either are committed to some uh, regulations uh, or they have you know uh, you know rightful uh, you know reasons for not going to the to the cloud, or maybe even uh, it could be a, a simple reason as you know committing to like a, an on-prem cluster and you know kind of purchasing and then just willing to stay with that. Now I will start with by saying that we would love to have everybody on our cloud solutions. The reason for that is is um, let's call it a little bit selfish because we would be able to standardize and basically light up you know a lot of experiences for a lot of customers at the same time. We would love to have that because that would allow us to reach a lot of customers you know at the same time however you know we understand the reasons uh, for these customers to stay on prem we have large customers that that have to stay on prem so uh, what we have created is we we, we have created uh, containerized solutions uh, and containers to address this we have packaged our services in the containers to deliver to our customers on prem so Marco, you know, many of our audience may not even understand or know this concept of containers. Um, you know, a lot of the things that we've shown here, you know, really talks about kind of the power of the cloud. Um, so can you just explain to our audience kind of the concept of containers um, and, and how it can be leveraged inside of an organization um, to deliver some of these things in an on-premises type environment? Right. So, so the typical analogy people use is basically the shipping containers in the in the delivery industry. So basically, you would package everything that you need inside a container so you can deliver it to the uh, to the customer. So similarly, uh, you know, a while back, you know, uh, the the most successful type of the, the container was uh, Docker containers, and and basically it allows us to package services that we have. Uh, and we love and use in the cloud. And by the way, in the cloud, we also use container solutions, even though we are in the cloud. So it, it allows us to basically take those solutions, take those services, uh, implode them in a, in a in a container, and then ship it to our uh, to our customers to use on-prem. Uh, there's there's some uh, real beauty in, in 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 knowing that you know these are the the things that we use in cloud, 
that we actually ship to our customers on prem. Yeah, the the other part to that is uh, part of the reason and part of the competitive advantage I feel of of Microsoft over some of the other large providers is that uh, we do have that ability to work with a lot of technology that is containerized, but also on a scalable global uh, scenario. Um, our clients are multinationals. They have you know they operate in you know hundreds of countries and so they need that flexibility to be able to have the the uh, you know 70 translator languages and the 80 voice fonts and, and some of the the technology that microsoft offers that's right that's right pam uh so it is it is paramount for us to make sure that you know, customers, of course, can use you know all of those like the the, the wealth of languages that we can uh, that we can uh, offer in a, in a cloud that we can they can use it on prem. So we work diligently to basically make our on prem uh, solution as symmetric as possible to the one in the cloud. So we we do um, emphasize that our ship dates around uh, basically uh, the the appearance of the new let's say language in the cloud and stuff like that. We would we would immediately take that and and offer it to our uh, to our on-prem customers as well. So that's actually one of the reasons our uh, on-prem customers have really loved our uh, um, solution so far, the on-prem one. Yeah, I think you know overall our hybrid story has been really fantastic and being able to be flexible for customers' needs. Um, so th thank you for sharing that information, uh, Pam. So let's talk about some real-world examples. I know you're working with several FSI customers, many of which are exploring or starting to do some really amazing things, leveraging uh, this next-gen stuff. Uh, we'd love your perspective of interaction working with them. Can you share some examples of what FSI customers are doing in this area? Sure, sure. So like the one that like that demo that you just uh, witnessed, there was a large financial services company that came to us and said, um, you know, we're really concerned. It's we, we we're trying to figure out how long it takes for a dispute to turn around and, and what that cost is. And um, they they looked at uh, several different types of technology, both on prem and in the cloud. Uh, they liked our the feasibility of what Microsoft could deliver, and we've done a lot of work with them in containers, and we've done they've customized and and they've really jumped in as a fantastic partner. Uh, we've also done some things with other clients around. Uh, Marco said it before: the custom voice fonts, where somebody wants to actually brand their company much much the way you would, but now we're in a new digital age. So how to actually get to a demographic where they can identify um, and they they can you can pick up where there is a branded uh, voice custom voice font for that person. And then there is a there's another scenario that we have seen where there's an institutional trading example where it's a trader to trader conversation where the the logs are the the voice uh, recordings are analyzed and they're detecting words that may trigger an audit audit or look for fraudulent activity those kind of things so it, it runs the gamut in financial services of what we can do with the technology yeah pam you know it's uh just thinking again about some of my own personal experiences um and you know for our audience as well you know how many times do you jump on a call with you know, whether it be your banker or, you know, your mortgage loan um, originator and you hear, you know, hey, you're on a recorded line um, and, or something along those lines, you know, for the regulators, you know, they have these the people that we're talking to actually have to physically say that, um, you know, before they start every call and, you know, get an acknowledgement. And so this is a great example of how, you know, we can leverage kind of some of these capabilities to be able to then provide organizations um, that ability to kind of do that um, audit trail or kind of manage uh, some of that risk as well. So, no, that's great there. Um, you know, I want to talk about some other examples in here. Um, you know, the future of the call center, you know, as we've seen in some of these examples is, is pretty bright. Um, and there are a wide variety of scenarios that customers can leverage here. Um, and so, Marco, could you just give us a glimpse of, you know, what this entire solution um, will really look like um, kind of end to end uh, for our customer and some of the things that they could do? Right. So um, what we can see here is basically the evolution of the scenario that we had demoed earlier. 
So in the in the demo, we have seen a one way uh, basically, basically traffic going. So we're going from the agent and the customer. We're going into the our uh, system for analyzing and then we have uh, the messages being posted to the board. Uh, the natural evolution of that is basically a bot like system where you have a two way street. You have the uh, agent making the interaction with the bot and basically going back and forth, uh, you know, uh, where the conversation is not as scripted or is not just one way as, as, as it is in the, in the previous one. What you can see over here is that we have uh, a, a, a division of labor, so to speak, where we have the on the left hand side, the edge device, uh, which is running the uh, just application that, that that can communicate to the bot. And then on the on the other side, you see the typical bot framework and direct line speech, uh, which actually power this experience uh, all the way through. So the speech to text, the language understanding and everything else is is happening on the other side of the fence currently in the cloud. Um, so so this is this is where the call center analytics is moving towards. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, two way traffic um, going back and forth is definitely an exciting next journey uh, for sure. So thanks for sharing that. Um, Joe Hansen, I know you're working with financial you know, services, numerous of them that that are rolling out Microsoft Teams to realize the value that can be achieved. Do you mind walking through an example of how this ties into a call center agent experience and how Teams is and can be leveraged? Yeah, no, this, uh, you know, thanks for that, Edwin. You know, a lot of our customers are looking to leverage Microsoft Teams as kind of the evolution for their call centers and, and what's possible in terms of delivering that rich kind of customer experience. And so what you see in this scenario here, I'm going to kind of walk through a couple of these kind of processes of, a, of an agent in here. Um, and so you're seeing the direct integration of things like um, our core CRM system to deliver, uh, uh, you know, to a system of record to deliver a differentiated experience for a potential loan customer or an insurance customer. So you can leverage the context of a chat to quickly link to a line of business application or CRM, and there's value in having this kind of context in the chat. But then when you think about, you know, delivering that experience, you can have a more personalized experience. You know, in the world that we're living in today and, and you know, a lot of the things that have transpired um, over the past several months, that face-to-face -face interaction with your agent, you know, tends to be a little bit harder. Um, but now with kind of these video-based tools, um, things like Microsoft Teams, you're able to have a quick kind of video call with your customer or client um, and to kind of really bring that true customer experience and that personal touch to things. But then you'll also see here the ability to have some of those details kind of be pinned to the right hand side. And then if you layer on some of the things that we talked about, you know, today with the call center and those experiences, Teams has the ability to customize the, inexper the experiences with these kind of in context chat bubbles or in meeting notifications. So here, for example, in the top right hand corner, you're seeing an example of that same kind of sentiment analysis that we saw in the earlier demo be leveraged here in a scenario where we're detecting that negative sentiment and then maybe offering a customer or offering the agent to offer to the customer um, a potential discount on their next statement. And so what this really delivers for organizations in, in you know, whether you're in insurance or banking or, or capital markets is the ability to now really kind of create that system of record, bring everything you need um, into the context of the conversation so that you can really deliver that kind of differentiated value for, for our customers. And so these are, again, just a few examples of how teams can be leveraged in this example um, to really deliver that uh, customized experience uh, for the agent, um, enhancing the overall customer experience. Hey, Joe Hansen, I mean, I love that. Uh, you know, in the world we live in today where uh, video chat is uh, prevalent, um, you know, having that type of experience, you know, rather than just waiting on the phone and, you know, talking into it, I'd love that customer interaction. I think it would bring me back uh, many more times with, with a good experience. Um, I mean, so Joe Hansen, as next steps, I mean, if I'm a Microsoft customer or an attendee watching via YouTube channel, seeing all this cool stuff, what are my next steps if an organization wants to explore this further? 
Yeah, so we've got a variety of different options for you to engage. You can either talk directly to your account team uh, that's associated to, um, to your account, um, or you can even reach out through our feedback form, aka.ms FSI Fridays feedback. Um, let us know what you're looking to talk about and we can connect you with the right resources. And then we can also follow into things like an envisioning session where, we'll, where you can come in and we can actually help you envision kind of this future of work. Very similar to kind of what I showed in that Teams example for the call center, you know, the possibilities as we've shown here are pretty much endless. Um, so really, you know, a variety of different options for you to engage. Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, Johansson, thanks for recapping that. Uh, Pam and Marco, uh, thanks for this fascinating session. Uh, what we've learned today is that there's tremendous opportunity here to transform that customer and call center experience. Financial organizations can build their own custom voice uh, that even speaks and sounds like a human becoming part of their brand. You can do everything from building your own keywords to speaker recognition to where you can have real-time sentiment analysis while building a custom speech recognition model, ensuring the service understands the unique things things your customers say to it and allows you to respond to callers with the right context. I mean, this can be the organization's digital asset um, that becomes part of their brand. There's also symmetry between, between cloud, sovereign cloud, and on-premise offerings uh, with the ability for non-intrusive containerized solutions. So, uh, I mean, really great stuff. Let's go ahead and take some uh, Q&A. So, um, you know, we do have a question from Sulab. Uh, there are several organizations, several organizations that outsource the call center and customer service activities to offshore call centers to reduce costs. In order to take advantage of Microsoft's capabilities that you guys talked about in this session, how do you go about causing a shift in business strategy and cultures of these organizations to move the customer support in-house? That's an interesting question. Uh, any, any takers from Marco, Pamela? I can take that. I, I think that that represents a fantastic opportunity for businesses whether it's the actual native company that no longer wants to do the offshore or the or the outsourced call center or the the call center folks themselves to to spin up yet another business and say i'm sorry did you you know what we'll kick you off we'll we'll show you how we do our call center and if you would like to take that on yourself as a task and not outsource it because you think you're going to get some better uh you know better business out of it, you know, go for it. I, I think that that um, I think that if I'm a call center owner, I would welcome that as an opportunity to spin up another business. You know, that's that's very interesting, Pam, because, you know, we have a bunch of call center partners that we work with um, in the Microsoft space, and a lot of them are leveraging um, capabilities that we're even showing here to do some of that kind of compliance reporting and, and other aspects. So that's a great question. Um, uh, we got another question in here about, you know, how can we leverage, for example, the power platform, um, you know, things like virtual agents to enable a no code method of creating powerful chatbots uh, for a wide variety of use cases. So I can I can maybe take this one a little bit. So I actually asked the same question of our um, of our um, uh, bot um, framework and direct client speech, uh, you know, um, team. So uh, the the answer at least today is that uh, while we definitely have the aspirations of integrating well with those types of solutions, we are um, really accelerating the path uh, by which we are solidifying the platform and the, and the SDK that we have. We would like to have a solid foundation so we can build up on top of it. As soon as we have that, we feel like we have, you know, everything all the uh, everything buttoned up in that space. I, I believe this would be the natural evolution. But when I mentioned this to our um, to our uh, team, uh, they basically told me that, you know, um, we we have to we have to first solidify, make sure that the platform has all the powerful things that we need to support all kinds of scenarios before we kind of venture out into the, the into the uh, no code kind of uh, visual uh, um, uh, platform that, that that's that's mentioned here. And I think Marco, you know, some of the things that you mentioned, right? It's it's not as much, you know, Microsoft is very much taking the capabilities that we have um, that we've shown here from Azure and then building some of these kind of no code, low code solutions. So kind of the underlying foundations or principles that you, you mentioned here are really kind of coming to life in maybe no code building solutions so that it makes it easier for people to kind of build these solutions without, you know, writing any lines of code. But no, thank you for that. 
Or, or, or I was going to say, sorry, uh, I was going to say this is something this is a, a unique opportunity for partners as well to step in and basically build on top of it because Microsoft has always, you know, uh, taken pride in, in, in creating really good, powerful platforms. No, thanks for that, Marco. Uh, this might be for you also. It's a two part question, um, you know, it, it, from Francine. Uh, we can, you know, it looks like we can handle custom words. How does it handle pronunciations? And also, um, you know, she didn't notice any uh, discussion around like mobile apps or Windows OS. Is, is there like an SDK or, you know, how, Absolutely. how, how do we handle that? Right, so so let's tackle it one by one. So first, uh, I apologize. I should have I should have um, mentioned custom pronunciation. Yes, we do have that, um, and this is something that's uh, that's available uh, even today. We're constantly uh, improving it. That and uh, what we call the, the feature called phrase lists, which is very important in the IVR scenario. We're basically uh, improving that. IVR is basically the uh, the interactive, uh, you know, automated system. Um, in the in the telephony system. So so yes, we do have custom pronunciation and we're constantly improving, uh, you know, all of those capabilities. When it comes to the SDKs, that's that's one of the key areas of investment for us. We are developing uh, powerful SDKs and this is not a Microsoft at all. Of all, we have it for Mac OS, we have it for Android, we have it for JavaScript and Node.js, we have it for um, all kinds of programming languages, all kinds of platforms. So I encourage you to look at, you know, our bot solutions to uh, our speech SDKs, both speech to text, text to speech, and and the uh, uh, custom translation and translation. Uh, all of those have extremely powerful SDKs that you can latch onto. We have also ventured into no code solutions and provided some of the uh, automated, uh, like command line solutions for handling some of these. If, for example, call centers are are, are maybe sitting on heaps of audio that they would like transcribe and they would like to do it in a batch fashion. So you'll find even those solutions now uh, available. Uh, and, and just to add to that, um, you know, the same lines where, you know, our financial services customers, a lot of in on the realm of customizations, you know, there's a lot of that financial services jargon um, and, and, you know, specific words that are just used in financial services. So you know, what's the level of customization that, you know, our financial services customers can use to better understand, you know, how people are saying certain words and then trigger words, things like that. And then even if you could also tie in, you know, some of the workflow uh, required for training. So like, you know, if a family member, you know, I'm on the call and and they mentioned the word, you know, uh, my kids are doing good, maybe offering to offer them a authorized user, for example. Um, Mark, you want to touch on that? Uh, sure. So I, I don't know if I can touch up on the last one. I think we, we, we can elaborate that one, but let me let me tackle the former one. Uh, so when we talk about um, our customization, uh, customization pipeline, we actually have a portal. We have a custom speech portal to which people uh, submit their customizations. Typically in the in the speech uh, realm, the customization is going to come uh, uh, to the language model. The language model is basically enhancing the vocabulary and, you know, um, I don't want to go into deep, but basically uh, in speech, you provide either a single word, two words or three words uh, and how they tie together unigrams, bigrams and trigrams so that uh, we would understand the context in which these uh, words are being used. So that's being submitted to our custom portal. Uh, our co custom portal basically takes the documents that are being submitted by, by customers, uh, goes through them and, and basically builds the Probabilities. Probabilities can also be provided by the customers if they know them. Uh, from that point on, we build a custom uh, grammar that's being, um, the technical term is interpolated with the uh, with the existing base model, uh, where we get a powerful joint model built out of it. So not only can we recognize all the word from the from the base model, and and we have you know a ton of words. This has been like amassed over the years, but we also uh, add to that, uh, and, and it's context sensitive, uh, the ability to uh, basically recognize the uh, specific jargon and words in the same sentence, in the same utterance. Uh, so that's being when the uh, when the custom model is being built, uh, we actually make it available uh, to the customers. There's a specific model ID that's being published, and then we can deploy it in the cloud or they could pull it down uh, on premises as well. 
Oh, that's great. Um, you know, we're at the top of the hour, but uh, we want to thank uh, you, Marco and Pam, again for uh, doing this great session. We want to thank everyone for attending this call via YouTube or watching live and asking questions. If you haven't already, please be sure to register for FSI notifications and invites by visiting aka.ms slash FSI Fridays. Um, you also have aka.fsi Fridays feedback if you're interested in a follow up. Um, we also have the YouTube channel. Go to FSI Fridays recap to watch previous sessions and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, Johansson, we have two more awesome August sessions lined up. What's next? Yeah, I'm excited for the, the next two, actually. You know, really, really special stories here. Uh, on August 21st, we're going to talk about um, Azure customer stories focused on insurance and risk modeling, and also how organizations can use Windows Virtual Desktop to enhance a zero trust uh, model. Uh, as well, on August 28th, we talked about this earlier, the journey to responsible AI on how we can drive trust through building ethical and transparent AI. You won't want to miss these sessions. Thank you, and we'll see you next week on FSI Fridays. Thanks, everyone.